runway guitar cable in, axe effects on. Oh, you, come, come here, come here. In today's video, I'm going to share with you five tips that are going to bring your blues playing to the next level. Kind of cliche, it is, but it's true. Grab your guitar, we'll get started right after this. Hello, my name is David. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping you develop your musical personality on the instrument so that you can tell your musical story. Five tips today, we're gonna to use a blues backing track in A. Now this backing track that you're hearing right now can be downloaded for free with the charts. The link is below. Check it out, sign up once, you'll get access to the assets of this video and many other videos on the channel completely free. All right, ready for the first one? Here we go. Tip number one is don't be slave to the first position of the minor pentatonic scale. Yes, it's a great position to learn, probably the very first one that you have learned on guitar. I'm talking about this. You know it, right? So many cool licks in there. But what happens after a while? Well, you get trapped, trapped in the box. How do you get outside of the box? Well, that's what we're gonna cover in this first tip. But first, why is it bad? What's well, bad because if you're trapped in the box, your fingers are going to they're going to feel in control. And when your fingers are in control of your music, it might be an acceptable musical statement, but you're not in control. Your mind, your musical mind is not in control, and that's very frustrating. Your solos always sound the same. So it's a very simple fix. Force yourself to step out of the box. Now, if you completely step out in a position you've never played before, played in before, that's too uncomfortable. So we're gonna gradually do that. And here's how. You're gonna take a position you're comfortable with. For instance, that first slice of the fretboard, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. And we're gonna look at the surrounding positions. The one on the right side, position number two. And the one on the left, position number five. Find a transitional note. For example, if you wanna transition from position one to two, you could use any of the notes as transition notes, but we'll use the one on the, the third string, fret number seven. That note can transition to position number two. So now you have this. And then you can slide back in. And the way you work on this is to develop short ideas, develop them. I mean short ideas, like... For example, over the track and, and then you'll, you'll be able to step outside of that box. And you can do the same with uh, maybe the position just below, the fifth position. All right, your fingers are no longer in control. That's good because your mind directs your fingers. It expands the musical possibilities. More words can be said musically by using this and just get comfortable with the surrounding positions. So that's tip number one. Now, if you add the next tip to that, it sounds even better. Tip number two is follow the chords. By following the chords, you're gonna sound a lot more targeted. Your licks, your ideas are really going to be speaking with the backing track in, in unison. They're gonna make one. So how do you do that? Well, you do that by being aware of the chords that are happening. In this case, we have three chords. We have an A7, a D7, and a D7. Now, we played the minor pentatonic scale throughout these chords, and that works great. I still want you to use that as a solid bass, right? Always revert to that blues scale, the minor pentatonic scale. It's gonna work great. But if every once in a while you land on a note of one of these three chords, when the chord happens, magic happens. Let's take a look at this. We have an A7. So A7 is in that slice of the fretboard right here. We have a bar chord, that's the A7. You can also use your pinky here on the second string eighth fret. Now if we create a phrase using the minor pentatonic scale, 
and we land on this note, for example, which is not in the pentatonic scale, but it is in the chord, we have something very musical. Right? We could do the same thing with the next chord, which is D7 right here. So we have notes from the pentatonic scale, but this note right here on the second string, seventh fret, is not in the pentatonic scale, but that sounds great if we land on it as long as we're doing it during that chord. And then we have an E7 right here, which is a fifth string, fret number seven, six, seven, five, pentatonic scale. And then one of the notes of the chord. Combining this with going in and out of the positions, this is what happens. We'll start in. We'll transition to the surrounding positions. Well, now we'll land on one of the notes of D. Right here, you heard that? We'll go outside. Now you heard that at the end, there were a lot of chords, kind of hard to follow. That's the turnaround, which brings you back to the beginning of the backing track, just as a loop. On that turnaround, you can apply the next tip, which combined with uh, the other things we talked about, makes you sound even better. Yep, tip number three is uh, adding tension. Tension is a great thing. Tension will bring the listener to an uncomfortable spot, and that's okay because you're bringing him back home to a comfortable spot. And that home is going to feel even better if you had an adventure outside. And that's what we're going to exploit here. So how do you add tension? Well, there's a lot of different things you could do. One of them is playing, playing in random notes. Any note. Ugh. That's pretty tense, right? Not good. Why? Because even though it was tensed, it, it was perceived as completely out of control. Like I have never played guitar before. You still want a little bit of control in your tension. And we can look at the notes because the tension is added by those weird notes. We're gonna look at something else, rhythm. If you have a rhythm and you add weird notes, it's going to be perceived not as weird, random, I don't know how to play, but as I'm in control. I'm taking you somewhere strange but I'm gonna bring you back in, follow me, I know what I'm doing. So, best way to work on this is no guitar in your hand, like most concepts, and you just subdivide things. Get comfortable with that, because from that, you're gonna phrase it rhythmically. Now add some weird notes with a Right? If we do this on the turnaround, which is coming very soon, magic happens. So you're playing with the pentatonic. You hear it is. Right, so that's tip number three. Don't be afraid of tension. Add tension, accentuate that tension. Magic happens when you do that. All right, let's take a look at tip number four. Tip number four is uh, don't use your pick. I'm not saying the pick is a bad thing, but if you don't use your pick, you have a direct connection with the outcome of your music. If you think about it, the musical thought starts from inside, from your mind, your soul, wherever the music comes from, it comes it travels through your body, out of your fingers, your muscles should respond to the musical ideas. Oftentimes it's not the case, unfortunately, but ideally that's what happens. And then you gotta go through the pick, triggers the strings, through the guitar, through the pickups, through the amp, through all that. Let's eliminate that and see what happens. Now, 
That is kind of a, a stretch. Yes, I know the pick is a great thing. But if you think about it, now you have a direct contact with the strings and you have maybe more awareness of the delivery of the note. Let's try this simple exercise. Uh, four notes, strings four and three, frets five, seven, five, seven. The thumb is gonna trigger notes on the fourth string. The index is gonna trigger notes on the third string. Okay, that's our lick, that's our idea. And we're gonna try to, uh, no backing track for now, but we're gonna try to accentuate the third note. So all the others are gonna be, are gonna be shh, quiet, 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 hard. Now let's try uh, notes one and four. Hard, hard. Now let's try to gradually go up. Less, less, ah, like that. We're trying to get control over this. And now if we add the backing track to that, with the fingers, direct connection, more control, more uh, feeling, more delivery, and combined with that, the other tricks, it's gonna sound pretty cool. That was targeting a note of the, the chord. Okay. Stepping outside. Trying to use all the techniques and the fingers. Targeting a note of the chord. Here's the E. Outside. See, just by using these four uh, tricks, starting to sound uh, kind of cool, I think. Let's add the final and last tip, tip number five. Tip number five is slow down. Take it slow, regain control over the track. Don't be stressed out with the ongoing backing track. Things will happen when they happen. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean playing behind the beat. Yeah, you heard of it. It's, it's a very, very simple concept. It's something that you kind of feel. Let's, um, again, no, no guitar here. We've got the track. And I'm gonna say I'm playing the blues and I'm gonna mash this. I'm playing the blues. Okay. I'm playing the blues. Boring. I'm playing the blues. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it like I mean it. Take my time though. I'm playing the blues. It wasn't. I'm playing the blues. It was more like, I'm playing the blues. That's what I want you to do musically. Let's try it. So instead of, uh, I'm playing the blues. No, it's, I'm playing the blues. Sounds different, right? I didn't land on the time, right? I took my time. And that's something that I would love for you to just explore, just try it out. Now, if you wanna explore this with a backing track, it's available for free and the charts. Check out the link below, sign up once, you'll get access to the assets of this video, many other videos on the channel too. I'm adding new ones weekly. And if you already signed up before, just click the link below, it should take you to the, to the play page right away. It's a great way to study and it's completely free. Thank you for watching this video till the end. I hope you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you don't wanna miss any videos, make sure you click the bell notification. And if you wanna go a little bit further with playing the blues, I have a free masterclass. Click that top video. It'll take you straight there. Thanks for watching this. Practice well.